Right, a change of clothes because I've actually been out in the shed uh, doing a lot of drilling and banging today. Um, but we've got the scope on the mount now, and as you probably noticed, it's quite dark, and I need it dark to, to demonstrate the, the next thing. Uh, as you remember, we've got the primary fitted, there's still no secondary and still no spider in there. Uh, but first, a question How many of you, and I know I'm one, are guilty of sort of if you're on your own or somewhere with your scope, sort of in your garden, in an observatory or something where you're not in, in sort of a, a, an astro party situation where light levels are kept to a minimum? You sort of think to yourself, I've got my torch in my hand and my telescope's pointing that way, and I, I just need to have a look over here. And you know, you, you, you've got your torch on, or your, your, your laptop even, and you've got your full screen going, and you know, everybody does it, I think. Now, also, the, the forums and the internet are absolutely full of people that are images that will post up pictures and say, I've, I've got this strange reflection, or I've got this strange artifact, and I can't figure out what it is. Well, here's a possibility that I'm going to show you. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the camera up to the scope aperture and I'm going to drop the lights right down and then I'm going to start moving about with the torch again. Right, I've never actually got the, the, the camcorder pushed as far down the, the aperture of the telescope as I possibly can. Uh, that image of me that you can see is, is my reflection as you are looking in the in the reflection in the primary mirror. Now the first thing that I'm going to have to do next is to put the camera into night vision mode and turn the lights down before I give you the next demonstration. Okay there we are in night mode uh, which means that the frame rate is quite a bit slower but that's not important. What we're going to do next is to turn the lights off and now I'm going to shine about with my torch up towards the back of the telescope and with a bit of luck you'll be able to see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. That's actually light that is bouncing around the back of the, of the scope where the, the primary mirror mount is and just working its way around inside and what we're going to do in a second is I'll bring you around the back of the scope and just show you how, we, how that light's getting in there. But it's something that doesn't occur to a lot of people. You think that when you're at the back of your telescope, that and you know there's nothing getting in there. Well, unfortunately, there is. Right. So now we can see exactly what's happening. The light is hitting these white areas, uh, reflecting off them, and actually some of it is working its way down in through this where there's actually a joint if you like between the rear ring and the and the primary mirror cell and it's it's just working its way around there now obviously blacking the mirror as i did do earlier uh, that's reduced it quite a bit so you can imagine what it was like previously but there is another thing that you can do to cure that and that's what i'm going to show you next Right, now this is something that we've actually covered in a previous video, so I'm not going to go to, into too much detail of it. But this is basically a, a Newtonian cooling system of, of my own design. Uh, it has a speed controller on it, um, you know, to basically slow the fan right down so that it's, it's in continuous operation, even through, through viewing. Uh, obviously, you put it on fast for your cool time. Um, you know, before you even start observing, just put the fan on and turn the power up and just leave it for however long it takes to cool your mirrors down. But the second reason, and one of the things that I designed into these, is this plate is actually just about the same diameter as this ring. So that when we take this fan system, and I'm just going to step into the camera and fit it. You can see now that it actually baffles that area where the light was getting in and I'm sure you don't need me to sort of you know put the camera at the front again and shine the torch in just take my word for it that does cure it and it, it cures it 100% so you could you know if you, you can either sort of contact me to try and get hold of one of these or have a go at making one yourself or you can even use a blank plate just get some black acrylic uh, and, and just sort out the diameters for the particular end cell of, of your Newtonian uh, and, and just fit that over the top. Um, Skywatcher used to put a black plate over the end of the telescopes in the older models. They stopped doing that quite some time ago, and it's quite possible that you know that that 
was the reason why they put them on there and I think the reason why they stopped is basically because it, it slows down cooling time and also you couldn't collimate without having to remove this plate and I think it was just a bit of a bind so it's just something to bear in mind that and like I said it's, it's one of those mysteries that could well be solved if, you, if you've been getting unusual reflections or uh, stuff in your, in your images that you, that you don't think that should be there uh, and that's it for that one.